Now that you've found UBN Radio and discovered our quality talk shows, it's time to spread the word to friends, family, and the universe. 24 hours of music and talk. Radio without limits. That's why people keep coming back for more. That's UBNRadio.com. I'm, I'm, I'm all messed up today. And I messed up because I'm freaking excited. I got some good stuff for you today. You know, when we, whenever we put this show together, when we put this show together, and, and those of you, and thank you for joining us again, young people out there, and, and my faithfuls that have been supporting me all this time. And although we know there's a lot of stuff going on in politics out there, but what I'm going to do today, I'm just kind of a little bit, tie a little bit of politics into what we're doing today. And because this hour go by so fast, you know, I say this every week. Uh, we're going to jump right in on this one because I think you're going to like this. This is going to be exciting because regardless of what we're doing in life, whether, whether it's politics, music, uh, careers, or whatever, the one thing that is golden is that we must have our health. And that is the key. So what I want to do, I want to introduce this young man. And I know some of you guys are, well, Larry, you're going straight into it this time. Yes, I am. Because I think this is worth giving as many minutes of this hour as I possibly can to this young man, the vegetarian guru. <laughs> Welcome in the house. Hey, how you doing, Larry? Now, you, what you're going to have to do, everybody know that I butchered up names. And stuff. <laughs> no, 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 I can do that because I'm from Mississippi. And I'm not from America. You know, in my country, I could do that. Okay. But uh, I know your name... It means David in Swahili, but tell me the Swahili pronunciation okay. of that. Well, first of all, let's fix the butchering of the uh, the vegan guru instead of the vegetarian guru. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some people are vegetarian. They still eat eggs and chicken and all that kind of stuff. We vegan. We going full plant-based. So this is the vegan guru, and my name is Daudi, D-A-U-D-I, Daudi. Which is Dowdy. David. Yes, sir. And now you can see why I didn't attempt that name right away. <laughs> and you have a guest with you here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My my trusted assistant in this uh, uh, food business we're doing. This is an amazing guy, but he's a director, producer, writer in his own right, Mr. Stephen R. McLean. Thank you. Uh, I, 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 Steve, when, when Stephen came in, I said, I, 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 you know, he, he, you know, he correct me. <laughs> I call him Steve McQueen. He's oh no, I'm not Steve McQueen. <laughs> but uh, anyway, glad. Hey man, I'm glad you guys came on, came by. Oh, glad to glad you so. stopped by. Give Amazing. us a chance to to have some real conversation about some real stuff here. Mm -hmm. And tell us about this. What I want to do is I'm so excited because I I personally have never had a weight issue, weight problem. Right. And but I've had so many people in my family. And mm -hmm. when we look at especially the Africa. African American community, right, uh, and childhood obesity, and and I wrote and illustrated uh, the children book on childhood obesity, the greed of mouth and upset stomach. So, mm -hmm. and one of the things that ex that was, I was so excited about you guys coming here, because I have been from a layman's point of view. When I say layman's, I mean that I'm not an expert in foods. Mm -hmm. I'm not an expert chef. And I'm not an expert in diet, diet, dietitian, dietary right. um, laws of, 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 of whatever, but I took on the battle of childhood obesity, I guess about nine years ago, mm -hmm. about nine years ago. And this was before the Obamas came into the White House, right. which, and, and then it became so politicized. And But let me ask you a question. You come from the entertainment world. Right. What got you into this? Okay. Well, basically what happened to me was I'm from the streets of New York, New Rochelle, New York, now rule, you know, and projects, concrete jungle, never seen a mountain, you know. Um, I was in the music industry hustling. Uh, I used to be a fireman in New York. 
and uh, would take my equipment to work with me and just try to make beats. Uh, made a move on my vacation days to come out to Cali and landed a, a deal with some music. But I found out that there were mountains, there was an ocean, there was oh, a, wow. a healthy vegetarian food. It was like the vegan capital of the world. Beautiful women, beautiful people. It's Cali, you know? <laughs> so I came out, I got a job. I came out, um, I took a leave of absence uh, from my jo- from my fire department job for one year, never returned because I landed a publishing deal based on songs and you know you're familiar with music yeah, and such. Yeah. And, uh, but I wasn't feeling right. You know, I was way overweight, 267 pounds. Um, Wait a minute. You, you you just brushed over that. Did you hear him say 260 pounds? Seven. 267. 267 pounds. Five, seven and a half. So just do the math. Little short dough boy. <laughs> that was me. Chocolate dough boy. Right. Yeah. Right. So I came out to Cali and... Um, Really just got exposed to some to Dr. Sabi, um, uh, a pamphlet of his that was laying around, and uh, I read it. And after after ignoring it for a while, I came and I read it, and uh, it said you should get rid of these foods that are harmful, such as uh, meat and dairy products and so on. So when I saw that, I had been drinking water for like a week. Uh, a gentleman that I was working with in the music industry was way overweight. His face was so big, he pulled out his license, but he was a slim guy. So I'm like, whose license is that that you're using? And he was like, that's me. I was like, no, you gotta be, you kidding me. I'm 267, I'm, I got the cleavage, got the big old belly. I'm like, no, you kidding me. So he said, yeah, man, you know, I had to do a little bit, you know, you had to do a time, a little something. He said, I didn't eat the food. I didn't want, I just drank water. Oh, wow. I wouldn't eat the food, you know, cause I didn't, I didn't want to eat the food. So I, he said he drank water, water, water. And he, he said the weight melted away. I'm looking at this skinny guy with the 300 plus face on the license. I said, take me to Ralph's right now. I want to go to Ralph's right now and get me some water. So I took my 267 pound behind over to Ralph's, got a gallon of water. You never separated my hand from a gallon of water until I became 115 pounds lighter. Water is the number one fat burner, number one energy builder. It will curve your appetite and melt away fat. It's the number one thing I tell people, first off, drink water room temperature so your body can absorb it. So not it wasn't just water. As I drank the water, I, it was one week. I read the Dr. Sabi pamphlet. I had lost 13 pounds when I read the Dr. Sabi mm. pamphlet because I didn't pick it up before. Because so I was like, eh. Now that the water took off 13 pounds in a week just by me killing water, I picked up the Savy pamphlet and it told me to become vegan. Basically, it told me to get rid of this, get rid of that. So I was ready, except for chicken and fish. <laughs> <laughs> I said, okay, I'll stop with the, you know, the dairy right now. I don't need that. I don't need cheese. I don't need that. But I'm going to eat chicken and fish. So within less than a year, it had phased out the chicken and the fish. I became completely vegan. Less than a year, 11.5 months, I dropped 115 pounds. And, um, you know, it's just been a whole new life. I found a mountain that I was walking in. Oh, wow. You know, I told you, never seen mountains. Never you know. seen mountain before. Found a mountain, walked the mountain, felt the energy of, like, you know, prophets who walk in the mountain. Who, where'd you have to go in the Bible? Well, you know? let me ask you this. Emotionally, yeah. what, now, what, had you been um, obese most of your life? I gained the weight when I was 20... Three, it was twenty. I'm twenty one, twenty two years old. My nephew got killed um, in New York, uh, and it caused me to go into depression. I gained like fifty pounds right away, like fifty five pounds. Then I, I, I had become a fireman at the same time. So you know, fireman, New York, Italian. Everybody on my job was Italian. Valerati, Giuliani, <laughs> and, 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 and you know what I'm saying. Everybody. So. We ate crazy every night. I mean, they had me eating bleeding, ble- bleeding cows, like you know the roast beef with the blood. They had me eating. So we was eating this food, and I just kept pounding on the. But the, the, the but going back to the emotional state that you were in when you lost uh, your nephew. Yeah, and depressed. Now that uh, and so, what was food to you then? Food was like you know, uh, it was comfort for me. You know. Um, it was like uh, I, I had gained so much weight. Like when I got on the fire department, I was, you know, a small guy. And I just kept going from 28, 29-inch waist all the way up to like 46. And so on the way, I had haagen every day. I had, you know, these mm. these uh, sweets. and So you were just covering up certain pain. Pain, absolute pain. Because at night I was going through this heavy pain of, losing, of the loss of my nephew. And um, 
I felt like it was somewhat, you know, I could have prevented it somehow. I don't know why I felt that way, but um, you know how you do when you're attached to to, to family members. Well, I, yeah, you, you 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 know, I can um, I can understand that because we, you know we kind of feel responsible <clears throat> for some of our our, our loved ones, yeah, you know, the ones yeah. and stuff like that. And um, it's funny, like the food. What well, also what happened was I, I'm be honest with you, I started to. Uh, I had I've always been a church boy turned homeboy. I never used uh, 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 any type of drugs or anything of that nature. Never used drugs, but I started I started to smoke. I smoked a little herb. I smoked a little herb when he died because he wanted to smoke with me, but I never smoked. I was a church boy. Mm. But at the wake, my nephew, his brother, said that he told everybody that he smoked with me, but he lied. He never smoked with me. <laughs> <laughs> so we had to wake and they had to wake at my house because I'm young. I got my wife and I got my, so they at my young people were at my house and my nephew comes with these blunts in his hand. He's like, you know, hey, he said he smoked with you. So I, and I'm thinking spirit energy. So I'm like, well, I right, he's in the ethers. He's spirit. I'll, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it as a ritual. I'm going to do it to him. I never done it, but I'm going to do it. 28 years old, first time doing that you know so uh what happened was i became a munchy dude because I, I started doing it you know for for a while and i became munchy 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 just just having the munchies and, munchy and, munchy and, and, munchy and so i gained all this weight you know what i'm saying so now i'm just too big i'm just big now so what happened that changed that in my life was that i had a visitation i would say <laughs> from spirit or whatever you might call it and i saw my nephew smiling and he was smiling and he told me he was all right. He said, I'm in a good place, I'm all right. And I was smoking and I was giving like homage to him. I was giving homage, I would say his name and I would say, you know, respect to him. And he, and he, the energy said, you know, you don't need to do that. You don't mm. need to give me this because that's not me. I'm more, I'm, I'm good. You need to be good. You just need to go for, let it go and be, be good. you. Go be, be you. you. And you don't have to give. <clears> it. Said, Only give praise to the Most High. That's it. There's nothing higher. That's it. So I completely. This is the year I came to Cali. This is the year I lost the weight. This is everything. I completely switched, and I no longer said his name. I only gave praise to the Most High. I phased out the munchies with water. I phased out the herbs with, you know, fasting and things of that nature. It, was, it wasn't hard. It was simple. But th at the same time, I became who I am now. This person who I was brought to Cali by, after that, I, I got this job to do Cali. And in one week, I made, like, what I made in a year at the fire department. You know, you know how it is. You yes, get, get yes. a nice little gig. It's like, I got to go. So I came out and it changed my life when I started to walk in the hills and started to melt away this fat. Steve is interesting too, uh, uh, you know, about him is because yeah. I took him on that journey. Mm -hmm. You know, Steve, you you've lost. Uh, you was telling me a little bit about. Uh, yeah, and, and in 2014, uh, um, um, I've been new to Guru way before then um, uh, for quite a while, and then uh, just in 2014, um, I decided just to go straight vegan, and that's what I did. And like within three months, you know, I usually had I had very high blood pressure. I'm talking about the nurse would check me and go, <laughs> "Are you okay? <laughs> You're like at stroke level. Are you all right?" I'm like, "No, I'm fine." Like that's how she would. That's how nurses would do. And it would be more than one. So you know, once I started eating vegan and I was working out too, we hit the mountain together. Was running the mountain, and you know, within three months, you know, next time I went for a, a, like. Two checkups. One checkup, um, the nurse checked, and she was like, just normal. She was like, oh, it's okay. It's a little it's a little elevated, but nothing, you know, serious. Like, that's elevation, nervous type elevation type thing. I was like, really? And then the next time I went for a follow-up, it was straight normal. Like, straight normal. And I know I attribute that to the food. It's, it's no way, you know, working out was part of it, too, but definitely the food. I mean, you, you just know that. And he makes incredible food. It's for the meat lover. I mean... <laughs> I haven't missed a meal. What? I still, at actuality, yeah. he gets on me for not drinking water enough. <laughs> right. I don't drink enough water. If I did, I probably would lose way more weight. Right. Um, and I still eat like regular, you know, I still eat like I normally would have eaten when I was eating meat. Yeah. Now, explain that, that, you know, you just said something very interesting. You said mm -hmm. he make food for the meat lovers? Mm -hmm. Yes, sure. Yeah. See, I make food what for the that? meat lover, man. Uh, it's like this. I got these vegan guru-isms, you know, um, <laughs> that I be hitting people with. And one of them is that if you if you know anything about the 
but the biblical dictionary for meat, meat is seeds, nuts, legumes, vegetables, and fruits. That's what meat is, you know? So the reality, like meat of a coconut, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The meat of an orange, you know, whatever. The meat that of an of, apple. The and... meat of an apple, it's like, it's, it's, it's meat. Yeah. So uh, 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 flesh is flesh. So I don't know where we got the where we made this this synonymous Just thing switch. with yeah it. with meat and flesh. So no, I make food for the meat lover because if you love nutrition and you love true food, then I make that for you. And if you love what they call meat, which is your cow and your pig and your 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 dog, no, but um, <laughs> if you love what they call meat, then you a meat lover. You don't want to eat it. You want it to live and and to be vibrant and to, you know and to be like us. And you know. No, it's, it's funny you should say that because you know I, I don't know I biblically speaking you know in the book of Genesis mm -hmm. it said when he created Adam and Eve and he said that uh, there's a passage I think in the first chapter it says uh, I've given you every herb for your meat ha, right. thank you sir yeah that's <laughs> in the go. first clap it up for that yes, one that's, yeah. that's, that's it's just in the first first uh, in the that's book so, of Genesis I so appreciate right. that yeah that you and so when you will, as you were Talking about the difference in the the flesh being the skin or right. the, the animal right. uh, versus uh, the meat. That's very, very, very interesting. Yes, so now you got this restaurant that you that you. Uh, yes, sir. Tell let's, us about that. OK, just let me just just let me just add a, a bridge to that. I call you, myself the bridge. Anyway. You ease in it any way I you just want. Shared that. I call myself the bridge because he calls himself a lot of different things. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's it's Googleism. Uh, yes, Google Googleisms. Yeah. But the bridge, one side of the bridge is always found in the troubled land. The other side is in the promised land. And I bridged the gap for our people. You know, I come from the projects, bacon, cheese, burgers, bacon, burger. I got bacon, <laughs> burger. I got, you know, I got that. And I, I come from McDonald's and all that, you know, every day, that kind of stuff. My my friends in school, my more affluent friends in school would always say my mom would kill me if I went to McDonald's, you know what I'm saying? But I was grew up on that. So mm -hmm. the bridge, I do food. This food I do, I do so that a person who's used to eating something that's delicious, deck, they ain't not missing nothing. I'm really? not going to let your taste buds miss nothing. So what happened was I had these um, celebrity clients, you know, because I started doing the food catering. And I shrunk Mary Mary, the gospel group. You know, they had a TV show and mm. all that. They went from 250 cent pieces the first season of Sunday Best to dime pieces at the at the uh, runway on my food. They lost eight dress sizes, considerable weight. Um, from there, I did Reginald Hudlin, Magic Johnson, Music Soul Child, Angie Stone, like all kinds of major celebrities and such. So they like Reginald Hudlin, the, the director, Reginald Hudlin? Yes. Oh my God. He was on my food for two years, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So he hooks me up with this amazing restaurateur, Brad Johnson. All black business, all amazing people. Brad Johnson did George's, Roxbury. Yes, he yes. He's an amazing restaurateur, second generation. Friends of him, he introduces me. We do food. He says, I introduced you to this restaurateur because you need to open a restaurant. So that's what Reginald Hudden did for me maybe three years ago, three and a half years ago. Since then, I've been on the quest to get this restaurant open. open. Happenstance. I walk into Whole Foods, and who do I see? Who do I see, Steve? Big boy. Big boy. <laughs> Big boy. The voice of L.A., yo. Big man. boy, voice yeah. of L.A. Yeah. You know, that's one of my heroes there, so. Oh, man, he's my yeah, hero, Yeah, he's too. a crazy man. I said it, yes, Big Boy, you're crazy, but we love you. <laughs> yeah. Indeed, and he is, a, he is a lot of people's favorite person. Mm -hmm. because he's no a great guy, he's a great guy. So I run into Big Boy, he's in Whole Foods shopping, but guess who I am? I'm the vegan guru. I'm going to. I I've seen I seen him on the billboards with all the fab and the fat and the diapers and all these billboards and I'm like I just lost my weight in '93, and I'm like yo if I could just get to him I'll shrink this cat oh you know so I see him in the mall I mean in the Whole Foods and he's he's slim because he did the surgery but I'm like I gotta speak to him so I walk up to him I go yo big boy how you doing brother this I just want congratulate congratulate you you look great. I'm the vegan guru. Lost 115 pounds, 11.5 months. You know what I'm saying? Hit him with the whole thing I do. And um, yeah, shrunk Mary Mary. You know what I'm saying? So he's like, okay, okay. Wow, that's amazing. He said, so what do you do? I said, I do food, man. I do food for the meat lover. I said, I'll twist your cap, whatever. What do you want to eat? He said, that's interesting. My wife has been talking about trying some vegan food because she wanted, you know, get in shape. She had the babies and such, you know. I said, man, 
Let me cook for you. What do you want? I do three cheese lasagna, blow your mind. He said, lasagna? She said, Vero, come here, come here, Vero, come here. <laughs> Called her over. He said, this is the vegan. He introduced me. Just met me. This is the vegan guru. Now, it was crazy, right? The next day, I did, I did dinner for them. Oh wow! The next day, bro. Well, you know what? Now, I, a lot of my listeners is, uh, is, is some is out of the country, mm -hmm. and some of you are on the East Coast, and some of you are in the South. And I so uh, certainly appreciate you. Let me tell you who Big Boy is. Big Boy is the king of radio in the largest market in the freaking world. Exactly. I know they are saying New York is the largest market, but I'm in L.A. and I'm biased. And plus, <laughs> I like my big boy. Exactly. Uh, now, right. I love this other guy before Steve Harvey. We love right. Steve. I love what Steve have done. Right. And it's nothing. It's, you, I can't. I'm not putting anything negative out there about anything because I love these brothers. Right. But Big Boy is the original. Yes, sir. Right. He's right. original, man. The story is amazing. Yes, yes. the story is amazing. So right. when you get a chance, you kind of Google Big Boy, and then you get to get an idea of how how hard that approach was, or right. that sales pitch was, or that or just that approach. Period. Right. Because guys like that have so many people coming at them all the time. That it's hard to reach them, you and know, not because right. they're they're negative. It's just that they they're out shopping and they want, they kind of want to be yeah to themselves. But and you was able to reach them. So how did the dinner go? Oh man, they lost their mind. Big still follow me, Steve. What did he right. say? Uh, Big to this day. Yeah, he said he gonna get arrested for putting real meat in the food. <laughs> gonna find cows and steaks in the refrigerator. <laughs> it's not gonna be plants. <laughs> You know, <laughs> so the thing is, though, it, it, it came off amazing because it's the taste buds, you know, and when you get to and when you don't sacrifice taste for this food and, and what Big Boy always says is that he searches for the aftertaste. I search for the healthy taste. It's not there. You won't find it. I do amazing organic vegan coffee cake. Do you have a coasters. website yet? Yes. Too good veggie dot com. Too good. The veggie. number two. G O O D V E G G I E dot com. Now, what is the number one ingredient in this? Man? Oh, man. The number one ingredient that I throw up all up in the food is love. L O V E. Oy, That's yay. what it is. Yeah, because <laughs> nothing died. Uh, mm -hmm. Listen how good people that. feel when they eat. They be like, yo, nothing died? I'm thinking you're going to say something like cinnamon. Uh, nah. some, he said the number one ingredient is, is love. love. Why is that? We're doing plant-based food. Right. Where does plants get all of their stuff from? The sun. What loves you the most more than the sun? Mm -hmm. Anybody tell me what loves them the most more than the sun? Shining on you, whether you're doing good or whether you're doing evil. It don't yeah. matter. You feel me? So, yeah, I put the love into the food, and you start shining when you eat this food. So, Too Good Veggie Kitchen is the name of our restaurant. We I linked up with Big Boy. Let me just make this clear. Mr. Ken, Mouse, Alexander, what up, family? Big what boys, can. yeah, big boys, big brother, and uh, what happened was they had a restaurant called uh, a Mexican restaurant. They had, and um, it was a smaller restaurant, and uh, they wanted to do something. Big wanted to do something more um, uh, as a movement to help people. He lost two hundred and fifty pounds, three hundred pounds, but he had to do the surgery. And if you read his book and you look up uh, Big Boy's story, you'll find out that he nearly lost his life several times from that and from that surgery. So he wants to help people be able to prevent this weight gain without having to go to drastic measures. So what me and him and Mouse doing coming together uh, is uh, is amazing. And so we switched the restaurant from the Mexican restaurant. We expanded this restaurant. We've been in construction for some time, but we're doing a grand opening Memorial Day weekend, Memorial Day, uh, uh, May 31st. And uh, we're hoping that everybody in within the area can come out and visit us. Well, you know, whatever you guys are doing, uh, uh, you know, whatever the little bit that old Larry can participate in, I, I really like this. I love this. I, like I said, I jumped on uh, trying to work with Childhood Obesity yes. years ago because I, my son came to me. Uh, God, he's, I'm going to say he was 13. I give, give I think he was about 13. And his best friend was 11 years old, died of a massive stroke oh, at 11 years old. That's wow. unbelievable. And, and I talked to his mother. Mm. And, and then without being in, eva invasive, I would ask my son, my son, on a day like today, what would they eat? McDonald's? 
mm. Kentucky Fried Chicken. And so the mother, I'm not condemning the mother. Right. I said, but mm-hmm. the mo- his mother don't cook. Well, she's working two jobs, and she's a single right. mother. And she just stopped and get fast food or whatever. He didn't say fast food, just get food. Right. Right. And so when I come to find out, it was Kentucky Fried Chicken. It was Kentucky Fried Chicken. It was Popeye's Chicken. Right. It was Church's Chicken. It was, mm-hmm. it was uh, hamburgers this, hamburger that. And the child, and I could explain to him how a bi- falling off a bicycle can hurt him. Mm-hmm. I could explain to him how a bullet could take his life. Right. I could explain to him how a knife could take his life. Right. Right. I didn't have the words to explain to my son how food could kill you. Right. And especially when it tastes so good. Right. Mm. And it's that language, the reason I came up with the children book, right. the greedy mouth and upset stomach, the right. debate between the mouth and stomach, what the body should eat. Right. I'm on Amazon.com. Go check us out. Yes, sir. Uh, when people purchase the book, I give the books to kids that can't afford them if I, if I can. And so when you look into the African-American community as a vegan um, guru, what right. do you what do you? What, I say what? that there needs to be a re-education of what food is. I call food in my book which I've uh, completed and will be releasing shortly, is called No Gym Required, How I Lost 115 Pounds in 11.5 Months. Uh, it's, I talk about food and I talk about it's backwards. We've been taught backwards. Milk does the body good. It's a backwards lie. It's not real. No animal drinks milk beyond nursing age and certainly not from another animal so milk does the body good is not from an animal from another species another species of animal indeed and so uh i call it doof we become doofy when we eat backwards food f-o-o-d doof and so what i would share as the guru um is that we need a re-education of what food is food again is nuts seeds veggies fruits not cloned chicken not, you know, fried uh, uh, GMO, you know, uh, chicken with no beak. You know what I mean? It's like when we- Whoa, 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 whoa. What do you mean chicken with no beak? <laughs> you know, they, they they breed chickens with no beak now or something. They, you know, I didn't they know, clone, that. I didn't know They take seeds out of watermelons. I well, mean, that's they true. can do all of these yeah, things now. The so thing. what I'm saying is what we're getting is a backlash of non-food being put into our body, flesh- and non-food that doesn't serve our organs, doesn't serve the cells. The body's made of cells. So you re-educate our kids, you re-educate our, our, our parents that your body is made of seven trillion cells, cells that die and replace 300 million every minute. If I was to sit here and wipe my hand, Larry, I'm gonna wipe a sore into my hand because I'm wiping away cells. Mm-hmm. They constantly die and replace. What are you rebuilding your cells with? Here's mm. the story. The three little pigs. Are you mm. using straw, sticks, or bricks? Oh, I like that. I'm mm. using bricks because I'm using that which was made by nature to cause me to be like a chimpanzee. Hey, a chimpanzee is like the size of an eight-year-old. Put a UFC fighter in a cage. <laughs> Y'all want to talk about cages? <laughs> right. Put a UFC fighter in a cage with a chimpanzee, a, eight, a size of an eight-year-old monkey. See what he does. He gets his face ripped off because it's impossible for him to deal with an animal whose bones are dense like iron. Why? Because your bones are made of cells. Cells die and replace. Your eyes are brand new every four months. Every cell in your eyes is brand new every four months. Mm. Your tongue is brand new every two weeks. What do you think acquired taste comes from? Mm-hmm. You acquired taste. If I eat an olive for the whole week and I don't like olives, after a week I'm going to ask you, where's the olives? Okay. Because your taste buds are new every two weeks. Your heart, entire heart muscle. You talked about this young boy who had a heart attack. Am I correct? Oh, he had stroke. He had but, stroke, which is relate directly. But, but then re- di- directly to the heart because the stroke don't kill you. It, it shuts the heart down. Exactly. Mm. So here's the deal. Heart is brand new every six months. Mm. Your heart is new. It's only new based on what materials you give it to rebuild cells. The only thing that cell food is what? Raw food. Salads, fresh squeezed juices, it's already pre-digested, it goes in the body, you get the nutrients, it's cell food. So as we begin to feed ourselves real food, we get real bones. I, I also like, this time I'm going to go by so fast, I'm so mm-hmm. loving this, because I also like something you said earlier, uh, because you, you, you used the word good, and I love that word, good food, good art, right. good music, yes, sir. is part of your recipe as exactly. well. Exactly. 
Good food, good music. That's just our way of life, bro. You know, and, and I want to, sh- yeah, I want to share something with you too. I want to congratulate you on your, your 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 children's books and that endeavor, brother. And I want to pledge to you right now all of the support that I can possibly muster because these children are our future. And these books that you have created, brother, it's my life. It's you wrote it. You wrote it down mm-hmm. for our kids, so I can bring the food to it, and we're gonna make this happen. And I just want to congratulate you on doing I, this. I, I, I thank you so much because what I have been so blessed at being able to do in my career is that I understand. Um, we all learn, but I understand the concept of uh, of uh, indoctrination and and programming. Exactly. And so our children and and adults, right. we have been programmed. Indeed. And when I sit back and I look at these things, and I give these examples all the time, we have to, you come in with the, the, the new food concept, the, mm. the beautiful food concept. Now let's come together and find the language that goes with that because we are competing with corporations that have think tanks that have billions of dollars to mm-hmm. put in the language. And for the first time, we can drive down the street mm. and look at a truck and see a picture that has been wrapped on a truck with a hamburger and steak, the most beautiful you ever seen in right. your life. Right. You can almost reach up and Touch. taste it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And our minds have never had to deal with this type of technology before. Exactly. Mm-hmm. We've never had the uh, pictures this 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 real before. And then what they have learned to do is to bump a stick of language. Mm. McDonald's, I'm loving it. Yes. That's all they got to say. They ain't got to talk it. about nothing else. Exactly. I'm loving it. Right. And I was telling somebody uh, years ago, I was in on a, a corporate meeting where we were in the hood here in L.A. We was, we was you know, uh, everybody's talking about going out to eat. And they wouldn't say international high a pancake. Black folks didn't mm-hmm. say that. Mm-hmm. The young black kids said, I hop. Right. I hop spent a billion dollars mm. around the world mm-hmm. changing Which, all their advertising, marketing to I hop. Exactly. Because we have to use the language yes, sir. Mm-hmm. that the kids are using in order to let them know that this is the way to go. Too good right. in the hood. Mm-hmm. See, that's what I'm saying. We're about to go with it. Too yeah. good in the hood. Yes, and, sir. And, 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 and that's what my goal is now is to help us deal with the language right because if you tell them and i and i sit in meetings and well this telling this kid i i I know i'm bouncing around i was in a meeting and they had these young kids uh, nine ten years old and telling them about food and that they shouldn't eat this and they shouldn't eat that and someone said something about shake his pizza The little girl, about 13 years old, and say, I dare you sit and talk about Shakey's Pizza like that. I love Shakey's Pizza. Well, you heard her feeling. She was crying. Wow. Because you just told her right. that Shakey Pizza right. is harming her. Right. And then you go through all these scary right. uh, description of the chemicals that's in the food. Yeah. Right. You're scaring the hell out of the 11 year old, right. and then you're going to give them something healthy right next to you. That's not going to work. work. No, no, no sir. No. It's, you, 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 do that make sense? I, it makes a lot of sense. And I, I, I want to just share with you that, man, that's not going to work. But I'm going to tell you what would work a 300 pound 11 year old who's being bullied every day, going to school, finds out that the vegan guru can give him some, or somebody can give him a plant based situation, and he ends up what? turning 12, 13 and being an amazing football player or, or, or sports guy because he lost his weight naturally. And mm-hmm. not only is he is he is he popular now and no longer bullied, but he's not retaliating with bullying because of his strength, but he's now benevolent, loving, because he got rid of what? This, the rage of the cow and the rage of the oh, pig getting this, killed and that you are what you eat. Yeah. You act off of that. So if we take a kid and we shrink him and now he's no longer being bullied because he's not fat anymore. But what does he have to offer his other fellow kids? Taste this pizza. It's vegan. It's mad good. Taste it. Taste this fresh squeezed orange juice. You don't need Sunny Delight. Put that aside. Here, the, the, try I, this. Yeah, not the, only that, the kid is active. That's the good thing about being <clears throat> vegan. And, even if you are vegetarian where you don't eat any meat and you're right. just doing plants, um, the good thing is the food is light. Like I would have him when I... I'm a director and a producer, and I have sets and I have shoots. I will have him cater those shoots. Why? Because the food that he makes is light on your stomach, and I and and it's filling. 
but you don't get that heavy sluggish feeling after you eat. Right. You're still lively. You still can move around. You still the can go keeps do keeps popping. The crew keeps popping, and you know that's important. <laughs> you know, I, I, I like that. I think uh, well, I really appreciate what you guys are just saying because mm -hmm. let's go back to the bullying. Yeah. You know, uh, the child's self-esteem is very, very low. So what? Exactly. You, if I'm hearing you correctly, if you, you take a child that is obese or weight, overweight, and he's being bullied, no question about it. Everybody teasing the girls, teasing right. him because he's right. big, and the guys, and then right. some of the guys are pushing around. Same with girls, it could be a girl, it could be yeah. the girls. Right. And so that self esteem is, is is very low at this point. Right. And so the way you're describing it, if I'm hearing you correctly, is that once you uh, give this child a, a proper diet. Uh, train them and let them slowly start to lose weight under this, and then the the the, the self esteem rises. But uh, but at the same time, they are not as bitter. They're not and because of the angry. reason why is because they're being educated. Children are empowered by education. When a child learns, when a one year old learns how to get to that table and get that cup without asking you, it gets to that. He gets to that cup. He ain't gonna ask. You gonna go get the cup? Education liberates children, and so. What's happening to this child is that not only is he, even before he's losing weight, he's seeing that something special is being done for him or oh, her. Oh, mm -hmm. wow. I don't eat that. They can't wait to say it. They can't, I'm vegan. I don't eat that. Oh, I don't do that. They can't wait. And then because you can it see gives the, the, Not only that, but then it's, they're educated. Well, why don't you eat that? Where do you get your protein? Huh, I get my protein from that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, my so kids, the educational level, then they tend to read about these things. Then, and and then now the other are, children are coming in and asking them for information. So now look at how look at how it's shifted from being bullied mm -hmm. to being the one teaching all the kids. They're coming to you and talking to you about what you know. Right. And you know what thing. you're talking about. I mean, I well, I watch you, my you, kids do it. Well, then you, you, but yeah, but you, I look at all the success that you've had around you to get to this to this point. Let me also mm -hmm. share with you that I I birthed my children at home, man, in the master bedroom. They ain't never been in a hospital. They ain't never had a vaccination uh, shot. They never even had diaper rash. Really, really. And I delivered my own kids, so I'm the one catching them. You feel me? So they have been empowered in a way that you can never shake them. I mean, they're just who they're meant to be. So we can do this for all of our children. I'm telling tell, you. Tell the story. He uh, <laughs> he told me, you told me a, a, a funny story a few minutes ago about your kids when they first, I think he was at a Whole Foods or something. They saw oh, this yeah, turkey. yeah, yeah, tell yeah. Me about yeah. When we first, like, we, we were in Whole Foods and, my, you know, we, we haven't celebrated holidays i mean i came up with no holidays with my children they never celebrated christmas anything because we were natural we we're on a natural thing and every day was a celebration so we decided two years ago steve remembers this yeah, i yeah, told him yeah. we doing every holiday we did halloween we did everything we're doing every <laughs> holiday this year yeah. so my kids were bigger and stuff so we were actually in whole foods during thanksgiving season and for the first time my girls they saw three girls and two boys my girls saw a turkey, and it was like, oh, look at the, why did they do to that turkey? Why is, why did they shave it? Why did they cut his head off? Mm -hmm. And they couldn't believe that people were eating, that that was their centerpiece for their dinner table, that they're going to eat this thing. They were like, why did they do that to the bird? Right. So I, that, that, to me, you know, I grew up on Thanksgiving and all of that. So that, to me, showed me uh, that, man, I'm doing something right because my seeds have evolved has what I used to be and the love that they have is so precious and pure. It goes to everything. They mm -hmm. looked at the turkey and literally was like, oh, I had to, <laughs> like, oh, oh. You don't want to see it, you know? It, it, it's so amazing. This time is going by so fast because all of the, a lot of what you're saying is, you know, the self-esteem and, and like what you were saying about the high blood pressure, you know, it, mm -hmm. it is just so clear that uh, eating right and exercising would lower your blood pressure and all these other things. But then it stopped you from taking all these different medications and stuff with all oh, these different man. side Very effects important. to all the man. medications and stuff. Man, and you know, I want to throw this in because you talk to a lot of young people. You, do. you know, last year, uh, Jay-Z and Beyonce did the 22-day cleanse, vegan cleanse, and they, mm -hmm. it was amazing. It was crazy how popular, uh, you know, how they promoted this plant-based situation. It's so much so. It was so popular for them and so big for them. Beyonce this year just recently started a 22-day vegan delivery service food service really i kid you not your listeners can so look it up to, to see this thing beyonce the consciousness 
level has shifted in America now. And I see that from my country, Mississippi, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> and the fattest in the world. And, right. But you're talking about the United States. We all travel around the world. Right. And, mm -hmm. and it used to see America uh, so f suffering from such a, uh, obesity and, and diabetes mm. and all the other things that come from it. And I, I know I'm shifting a little bit because of time, but oh, <laughs> one time I met Big Boy was with Luther Vandro. Mm. And uh, mm. Luther told me one time, and I was, you know, he was straight. Me and Luther were straight. I, we weren't buddies, but right. I knew him. I right. promoted some of the records. And, right. and one day I caught him in where, he, where he, he would talk with me. And Luther, always struggling with his weight. Right. And I told Luther, I said, Luther, I, 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 I just don't understand. You lost it and you gained it back and you lost it and gained it back. You're taking all these medications and stuff. And I think... I don't know, but I, all the medication and up and down probably played was, a part in the right. stroke. Yes, yeah. indeed. They, no they killed him. Absolutely. Yeah. But Luther said something very interesting to me. And he asked me, he said, Larry, uh, do you drink? I said, yeah, I drink, but I never drink out. I never drink at a bar. I never drink at a party. Mm -hmm. I only drink at home or in private or in my hotel room. Mm -hmm. No one gets to see me drinking alcohol. Mm -hmm. That's just my thing. And so he said, "Wow, you seem to be pretty proud of that." And I said, well, "He said, would, would, would you call yourself an alcoholic?" I said, no, I love my alcohol. I, I just love alcohol." He said, "Well, here's the difference: when you walk in here, no one knows you love alcohol, and you don't look like an alcoholic. Right? No one knows you're a drug addict, right? Because right. you don't do drugs in front of them. Right? He said, "But when I walk in, they know I'm fat." Right. They know I'm overweight, and right. I can't I can't hide that. And and he's told me about the stress, right, of that. Yeah, and it just broke my heart when it just mm. was, oh my god, he just made sense to me. Right, you know. And, right. Uh, I know that feeling. Um, one of the things that I, you know, I'm doing a TV show and I'm doing some cooking shows with some celebs, but I'm doing a show about, uh, you know, the shrink and who I am and helping people lose weight and so on. And one of the good things about what I bring to the table when I put together programs, I have a 50-50 program that I'm offering also. But once when I get a client to do a program is that I was the fat boy. I was dough boy. I know all about the fat. Mm -hmm. I tell him, I tell whoever, I'll tell you how the fat's going to leave your body, where it goes from first, where it comes on last, where, you know, everything right. about it. And I'm going to tell you how you feel about it, how you feel while you're losing it. You actually become, you actually believe you're actually fatter. While you're losing the weight, you go through this really? dilemma. You go through this. Am I right? Mm -hmm. You go through this yeah. dilemma where the fat is dense on you. So as you start to eat it, it eats from the inside out. It eats from the inside. I don't. It don't shrink from outside. It shrinks from inside. Okay. So as it's shrinking, you're 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 you getting loose. Your skin is getting looser, and so you're feeling like you're fatter, but you're really losing the weight. You just got to stay focused. You got to stay on the course. Mm -hmm. And you can't let nothing uh, get you down. And you lose weight in your face first. You gain it in your face last. Wait a minute. Now, when you said let nothing get you down, now you going back saying emotionally, emotionally. there are some things that can affect yeah. your weight loss. Exactly. Because you think that you can never get. Luther was trapped in something he thought he could never get out oh, of that fat body. Wow. So if you feel like you're fat, but you're going to feel that as you're losing. And if you think, oh, I'm fat, you'll think, oh, I'll never lose it. And you get depressed and you go get that haagen -Dazs. Somebody tells you, you look great. You look mm -hmm. like you're losing weight. Why? Because you're losing in your face first. Right. You're gaining in your face last. So just the fact that your face is fat, accept that you're fat. Because mm. by the time your face is fat, your stomach is fat, everything's fat. Oh, Do you understand? Yeah. It comes to your stomach in midsection first. It leaves from your stomach in midsection last. That's what fat does. Oh. And you lose it from the top of your head going down and the bottom of your feet coming up. That's how you lose it. From the top of your wow. head. Look, that's why your ankles get slim first, your head and face. Then it comes. You see what it's doing? Yeah, yeah, it yeah. goes like that. So then the middle is what's left. Always. is The middle is the last part to go. So when I help people understand the science of fat. No, I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just play it. But when I help people to just kind of accept their fat, this is what I told. Did I tell you? Yeah, yeah, it's the same thing you told. What me. did I tell you though? Yeah. Tell them. Let's let's tell the people. I did tell you to accept your fat. Yeah, accept your fat. Become one with it. <laughs> well, understand your fat. Yeah. <laughs> wait, 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 you do understand it. Wait does, a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on a minute. First. I cut you off. I want you to say that again. Mm -hmm. Understand your fat. <laughs> Become one 
if you're fat. And then you start to look, you know, you talk to it. You, Remember you I told you to talk to it. it. What yeah, I tell you to, to say to it. Get, tell him what one go of the things, away. No, what <laughs> well, the main well, things I told you to tell it. You don't remember? Uh uh-uh. uh. You this is the last time you're gonna be here. You're going to <laughs> You're leave. saying goodbye you're to saying it. Goodbye, I'm yeah. holding you. I said grab it, touch it, I'm holding you, but you're gonna be gone mm-hmm. very soon. But I you will know, never hold the, you the, again. The, the thing that I like about what you what I'm reading inside all of this is that there is a consciousness to this whole Big health time. and weight loss and spiritual, and, and it's, spiritual it's a, it's a, fitness. Yeah, baby. it's a spiritual to it. Yeah, because you change yeah. when you start. First of all, when you change your antenna or you clean your antenna or raise your antenna, you pick up on higher frequencies. And what happened to me when I came here to Cali and went on the mountain, started praying because I forgot I failed to say that the, my motivation was not to lose weight. My motivation was I got in touch with the spirit energy and was you get to the top to pray. That's what I did every day. I got to the top to pray. What happened was a change like Moses. You know, Moses walked in the mountain one way, came down different. That's what happened to me. I completely <laughs> changed. But um, I was going up there to pray. So it is spiritual fitness because your life changed. He can tell you mm-hmm. your work, your creativity yeah. grows, uh, your your craft, um, the love that you share for yourself. See, first you got to love yourself. So when you're careful about what you put into yourself, you love yourself. You can't be a drug addict being careful. What vegan? Do we know vegan drug addicts? I don't know. Because it's like... You're so mm-hmm. careful about what you put in your body. How would you destroy your, you know what I'm saying? You yeah. don't do that. Right. So it's a spiritual thing that enhances your life on every level. We get rid of food dramas. Mm-hmm. In my book, I got, you know, we got to come back and do the book. Oh, I, I can't Definitely wait come back to and do come the book. back and do the, the book, book you know. Crazy. Yeah. Um, and I got food dramas in there, brother, that I talk to, to the people. I'll give you a simple example. You know when you go to the refrigerator and you open it up and you go, what do I want to eat? You don't want to eat at all. You're thirsty. The brain signal for thirst and hunger is exactly the same. There's no differential between that brain signal. Therefore, you, when you don't drink water, and the average American is, if they only drank water when they were thirsty, and whenever you were thirsty, you only drank water, one step away from dehydration. Mm-hmm. Because you got to get your your 16 cups in. You got to get your 16 cups. You got to get your gallon in. You got to get it in. Remember I told you how I lost yes. weight water? Yes. So when... You look at what, why does water curve the appetite? Because that signal, that's hunger and thirst is the same. So if you give the water, it half, it cha- it cuts it in half. Mm, okay. So now when you get that signal, you're like a lion. You're really hungry. You're going to go for fuel. The lion doesn't sit there and go, what deer do I want? Uh, no, the whatever's close, closest. I'm jumping on it and I'm eating. When you open the refrigerator and you ask the question, what do I want to eat? You are really thirsty. I like that. And basically. I'm going to remember that. You are to, that's a food drama. You are to. Close that refrigerator, drink water, drink water, let it go down, and then when you really feel hungry, you're really hungry. Now you feed yourself. So some of the things, and then another part about I use with the refrigerator is that people think, this is a drama, that if the refrigerator is empty, they're empty. Mm. Please stop it. You fill up your refrigerator, you fill up your pantries, and you waste 50 to 60% of that food. Because it goes to freezer burn, stale. You don't get to it when you mass shop like that. So this is all in my book. So I teach them, do not have the drama of this, of like, of, of, of if your, fr- fr- your refrigerator should be empty. Because you should be like a lion. They don't have a refrigerator. You should be consuming your vegetables, consuming your organic produce and so on. Going to the market. You just like said, you go- I, I'm only because yeah, of the sake fresh. of power. We, we, we read it. We got about three minutes. Okay. Uh, and but that was very powerful. Powerful that you. I never heard anybody put it that way. When you go to the refrigerator and your refrigerator is empty, people feel empty. Exactly. They think they they're in lack. But the reality is, your refrigerator should be empty because your food should be inside of you, and not sitting in the refrigerator. There's no such thing as a refrigerator in nature. Mm-hmm. So therefore, we should be going to the market, meeting our neighbors, meeting our community two or three times a week, getting our walk exercise in, knowing what's going on in your in your healthy community and buying healthy uh, organic produce. You know it perishes, so you eat it. Mm-hmm. So make sure your refrigerator, all oh, it should be in there is condiments, stuff you want to put on stuff, things like that. But as far as food, that should be in your body. Wow, that's, that, that is absolutely amazing. I know we, we at that last minute, we got a minute left. And what I want to do, what I always do when we end the show, and I thank you guys so much. This is not enough time. You got to come back. This oh, yeah, is your sure. home. No, for sure. This is your home. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Feel uh, right. okay. cooking show coming, too, so we got to no. come back. We got to do yeah. that. Now, yeah. well, let's get, start right here. Mm-hmm. Give us words of wisdom to say goodbye to the audience. Uh, my words of wisdom are, is, um, you know, 
be well and be happy, man. And 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 the way you eat and if you work out, that you're you're always going to be happy and healthy. So that's that's what I'm gonna leave that with. It's just the theme. Mr. Guru, you got to give us the words of wisdom here um, as, as we close this down. I would say that your life is the life of God. Rejoice and be glad in it. Um, your body's made of cells, wonderfully and fearfully made. It's able to heal itself. It's able to regenerate itself. All you have to do is give to it what God has originally put on the planet for you to give to it. I've given you every herb for, for me. And there, you go. there you go. I, I want to thank you guys. Uh, we're at that. We're at that hour. Uh, anyway, I want. I, I just. I want to say this. Uh, your wealth. Uh, financially is, is in the is, is in the bank and in your investment mm -hmm. but your true riches mm -hmm. is in good health mm -hmm. yes sir and remember a nation can rise no higher than it elevates this woman thank you see you next week yes sir all right Give time. <laughs>